go guys baitcaster float and fly fish what's up youtube welcome back to d-ray fishing as promised in 2019 we're gonna we're gonna do some uh videos about how to's how, how we do things how i do things how i modify things to fit my style of fishing so uh, i'm gonna do a video on and this is one of my goals in 2019 it's kind of to get back to some some roots of my fishing um stuff that I wish I did more in 2018. I kind of got away. I tried to power fish way too much and in, 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 on the lakes and some of the tournaments I, I was in. So this year I'm gonna work on getting back to the roots of fishing, simplifying it, get back to finesse style fishing when, when things and plans don't work out the way they should. So today's video, we're gonna be covering something that a lot of people probably never used, been afraid to use, but it's a very, very powerful fishing technique this time of year. Um, we've got cold fronts that come in. It's 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 kind of weird right now. We, we've got 60 the other day. New Year's Day was almost 70 degrees, so is isn't going to help this style of fishing, but I'm, I'm going to do some modifications, get ready to go fishing on the lake. We're going to Carter's Lake, which is a mountain lake up in North Georgia. We've got some massive spots in it, and I used to mess around with this technique a couple years ago just kind of got away from it but i'm gonna go up and play with it but while i was modifying i'm gonna do a video on how i fish this thing um so let's get into it so like i said what we're covering today is the float and fly it's a very very finessey technique and a lot of people don't like it uh, mainly because of the most of the videos you see the way you have to fish it so what I have here is I have two different types of bobbers. Um, this is the Red Rooster bobber. It's got a central weighted system in it. Um, so when you, it does detect the lift bite, you know, if a fish was to grab this thing, pull it down, that's easy. I mean, you know, you got to bite, but these things are, are weighted in the center so that if you ever get a fish that comes up and grabs this fly underneath and lifts with it in the water column, this, fly, this float will turn over on its side, indicating that you have a bite. Um, these are a little expensive. Um, I prefer this one. I found this one. This is at Cabela's or Bass Pro Shops. Um, it's in the bobber section. Just go to where they out, have all the floats, and look for the bobber fly. And you can see here on the packages, it says it, it lets you see all the bites, which is indicating that, that it will turn over on its side if you was to get a lift bite. So uh, these are weighted on both ends, as you can see. And just by playing with them, I mean, either one will work perfectly for, for the float and fly. I just prefer, I can see this one a little bit better um, with the orange and the white. You know, if I'm making kind of a long cast and it's out there where you can barely see it, I can actually see if it turns on its side, stuff like that. So let's get into what I do to it to modify it. Um, all you need is some kind of super glue. I like the rapid fuse. I mean, it's pretty instant and it's a strong hold. You're going to need some bobber stops. Um, I've got two different types here because it, it kind of depicts which way you like to fish. Um, I guess we need to get into how this thing is originally fixed. Fish. So what people would do is you take these bobbers and as you can see, it's a normal bobber. You can push down on it and what you do is you clamp this on a three-way swivel um, and then depicting determining where the fish are you have to make a leader down to your fly uh, most of the time that's 10 12 14 sometimes 20 foot so what you have here is this long leader and you have to have a floating fly rod which is normally a 10 
to 12 foot rod that people use because you've got such a long leader that that when you reel the swivel up to the end of the rod that's all you got you can't reel it anymore so you've got this long leader and you have to have a whip kind of like fly fishing trout fishing and you kind of have to whip this thing out there and it really really limits you if you're fishing bluff banks and stuff like that to, to, to how far you can sit off stuff like that because it's it's really hard to cast until you get used to it. So I started playing with things and it seems like everybody came up with the same technique at the same time. But uh, it, when, when you're using a spinning rod, you can, you can go down to your regular drop shot rod, your shaky head rod, something that's relatively short and it's not 10, 11, 12 foot long. You can throw it on a six foot rod and what you do is you use this system. Um, you can't really use this style of uh, bobber stop because when you wind it up in your spinning reel, your line will catch it when you go to cast. And you do face that a little bit, but not as much as this. So when we're going to go over that for a spinning rod. Um, the reason I have these set out is because I've got where I prefer to throw it on my bait caster rod. So let's get into some of the modifying on the uh, floats that I do, and then we'll get into how to use these systems. All right, let me get y'all set up so you can see here. So, like I said, either one of these bobbers will work. I kind of prefer these. They're a little bit cheaper, and I just prefer, you know, by sight and the way they act a little bit better. So, what you're going to do is you're going to open up this pack. We're just going to use one right now because I'm just doing the modifying. And what you're going to do is you're going to take this bobber, and you're gonna push down on it. See how this pushes down? Now I'm gonna take my pliers and I'm gonna cut that wire. While I'm pushing down on it, cuts off really, really easy. What you're gonna see is it goes back up in it when I release this. So I'm gonna grab this whole system, the top of it. Get y'all where you can see it real good. This is the other side where you could, you know, if he's brim fishing or something, clasp it on top of your line. So we're gonna remove this wire from that. We'll lay it down here. So there's a spring down in here too that controls that forcible pushing back up. So we're gonna discard it too. So all we're left with is just the bobber, the bottom of it, that's where we remove the wire. This is the top. Here's your insert that we are gonna put back in it. However, we're going to do just a slight modification here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my super glue ready. And I'm going to get an eighth inch drill bit. This is, it, it really doesn't matter. And you really don't have to do this. I just prefer doing it because it helps my line slide through it faster. So what you're going to do is take your pliers, grab the top section. Again, this is... Where this came out you're going to grab the top section it slides right out just take your pliers so here's the top section here's the weight that's on it keep it on it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab this and see how small and tiny that hole is i want to open that up where it's the same size as this hole going in that's much bigger than what this is and the only reason you won't do that it makes it a pain when when the thing's back on here all put together and you're trying to feed your line in it. It's a pain to get it fed through there. So it helps me if I open that hole up. So you don't have to use a drill or anything. I'm just going to insert this into the top, this drill bit. It's about the perfect size of this hole. And I'm just going to take my hand. Let's see if I can do this where y'all can see it. And I'm just going to sit here and twist it like this. The drill makes it much faster, but I don't want to booger it up too much. So just with some forcible pressure and pushing and pushing and pushing, it's plastic, it drills really, really easily. Um, like I said, you can use a drill. We're already about through it. And there you go, it popped right through. So I'm just gonna keep twisting it. I'm gonna work it up and down because I wanna get all the burrs off. I wanna make it nice and slick. And like I said, it is, it is easier with a drill. I just prefer doing it by hand for some weird reason. I'm gonna go up back in the bottom side and just kind of move it up and down like you're sanding it pretty much. So now you can see that that hole is nice and big on the bottom, same size all the way through. 
So what you want to do at this point with your weight still on it is I'm going to kind of feed it back in a little bit, back in the top. I'm going to take some super glue and I'm just going to dab a drop on this side, turn it over 180 degrees, put a little drop on that side of the shaft. So I've got it super glued. I'm going to push it in. Hold it for a second. Like I said, this rapid fuse, I mean, it's pretty much instantly. This is not coming back out. So now what I want to do is I've got to close this hole up a little bit because if I've got the bobber stop or a bead or something like that, it's actually going to try to go down in this hole, and I don't want that. I want my line as it's feeding, and y'all see how this works in a little bit. I want it to stop right at the top of this bobber. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert this top piece back in. So pretty much the same thing as we just did. I'm gonna insert, I'm just gonna put a drop on the shaft of this. I'm gonna push it in there and twist it and turn it. So there's our bobber. Completed, put together. Um, you don't, I don't like to glue the bottom in and I'll show y'all why just in two seconds all right so I'm gonna spool off a little bit of line here and here's what you're gonna do first pretend this is coming off your rod you're gonna pull some line out hopefully y'all can see this real good you're going to take your bobber stops. And then again, this is for the bait casting method. This will not really work that well on a spinning uh, rod method because when you reel this bobber stop up, it will come through your rod fine. It will go into the reel fine. But when you go back to cast, your line is going to hang up on this bobber stop, which you don't want. Now, I found on a bait caster, it works really well. Just check to make sure that these little stoppers just put it on the end of a line, nothing tied on it, and make sure it'll come through your rod fine. It'll go through your bait caster fine. So what you do, let's just thread one of these bobber stops on here. All right, as you can see, I got my bobber stop. So what this allows me to do, which I like a little bit better than this method, is this is adjustable. Um, it will move sometimes. If you make a forceful cast uh, and this gets kind of hung up in your guides, um, it will adjust itself a little bit, which you don't want to do. So I prefer to just make nice, easy, like ca uh, smooth cast. Um, you don't need to be throwing your bobber out 50, 60 yards because you can't see what it's doing anyway. So you're going to slide this bobber stop up to where you want it. Like I said, normal anywhere from 12 to 20, 25 foot. I like 12 most of the time, that's where I stop um, because I wanna be fishing above the fish. I do not want my fly below the fish. Most times fish aren't gonna move down to grab something. However, if it's just right up above their face when it's cold, they will come up to grab it. So I want it. I want to start at 12. If I'm not getting any bites, then I'll work my way down. So I'm gonna slide this somewhere up there around 12 foot, not doing it now because we're just doing a how-to video. So then what you're going to do is you're going to take your modified bobber. Like I said, this is all drilled out, glued together, ready to go. So I've got a little kink in this line that I want to get rid of because I want it pretty nice and straight. Okay. So this is why we do not glue the bottom in. I like to remove the bottom from the bobber when I'm trying to thread this onto the line. It just makes it so much simpler. So what you're gonna do is that center hole where, where the wire was originally. You're gonna feed that in, keep pushing, keep pushing until it comes out the other end. Now, like I said, this hole is nice and big. It doesn't need drilled out. It's just if the line hits the edge of it, it makes it a pain trying to get through there. So I'm gonna pull my line to the bottom of the bobber and then try and get it where y'all see it, but I can't see it. And then thread it back through here, same way it goes back into the bobber. So then you take it, insert it back in, you're good to go. That slips nice and easy. There's no restriction at all on it. 
So we're going to slide it on up the line. And then finally, you're going to tie your fly on. And I just pulled the old one out of the box, so. You do not need no big massive knot for this most of the time. I'm using five pound line just because this hangs in their face for so long. They're very finicky when it's cold, metabolism slow, and I'm just looking to increase my odds, so I like light line on it. I'll usually use 10 pound braid to five pound line, kind of something like you'd use a spy bait with. And we're gonna trim this thing up, trim our tag off, and we're good to go. So like I said, this is what it looks like when you go to cast it. There's your bobbers down here on your fly, and when you throw it out, this bobber will lay on its side, and this fly will begin to sink, and it will sink, and it will sink, until it gets to right here where this bobber stop is. And I usually like to watch, use the yellow ones because I can see it coming up to the bobber if I'm close enough. And then what happens is the weight of that fly forces the buoyancy to get out of whack and this float will stand up like this. And then you just, you, we're gonna do a video on this, how, how to fish it, but it's pretty much do nothing. So it's gonna sit like this in the water. If a fish grabs this fly and takes off, of course this is gonna sink, you know you gotta bite. However, if it grabs it in the water column and it just kind of sits there with it or it floats up a little bit, this bobber stop, it loses the, the, the weight on the bottom and it's perfectly balanced, sorry, and it will lay over on its side, just like the traditional float and fly method and you know you, the fish have gra has grabbed it and you reel down, set the hook. Um, one of the big factors is, is most of your traditional style methods you've got such a long flimsy rod that they say you really really want to drive the hook and that's not the case with this i just find that a kind of a light hook set um like you use finesse fishing with your um, nico rigs ned rigs stuff like that you just kind of reel down let them load up on it and lay into them a little bit because this is a little bitty hook let me get all this material out of the way as you can see that's a little bitty hook and if you drive this hooking a fish i mean you're pretty much going to be straighten, straightening it out so that is how i fish it the bait caster method and like i said we're going to the lake here in a few days and we're going to do a video while we're out there how we fish it the methodology behind it so y'all 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 see that in this video too just like before here's our line coming off your rod what you're going to do is you're going to take a threaded bobber stop and all this is is it's kind of like a it's a piece of string that's already pre-threaded for you pre-knotted you run your line through that tube you can pull it up pull it up your line and you kind of got to get it where you want it so if you're going to be fishing 12 foot you want to get this up about 12 and a half foot give you a little bit room for your knot and what you're going to do you're gonna slide this string off that tube, just like that. Disregard this rubber bobber stop, I still got it on there. You're gonna pull this tube off your line. You're gonna grab both sides of this string. You're gonna pull, 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 pull. You wanna get it down as tight as possible. You want that knot to be as small as you can get it because you do not want it to hang up in your spinning rod. So once you get as small as you get it, what you want to do is you want to cut off these, you want to hold your line. As you can see, you got two tags. You want to cut those off. As close as possible without nicking your line. So as you can see, you're left with this little bitty knot in your line. And like I said, it's not 
really adjustable. If you really pulled on it, you probably could, but you run the risk of burning your line. So you pretty much won't get it where you got it and you're kind of stuck with it. So now we're gonna pull up here to the end of your line. And what you want to do is just take a little bead bead. Doesn't matter, a little glass bead, something like that. And what this is going to do is it's going to prevent that little bead knot from going down into your bobber. So you're going to thread the bead on next. Smaller the better on the bead too. You just want it big enough where it, it won't go down in the bobber, but you don't want to bead that is so big that it's dragging water, slowing the fall of your fly down. I've got a terrible bead. All right. So you're going to take this bead, thread it on your line below your threaded bobber stop, just like this. You're going to slide it up, let it go up to your threaded bobber stop. Now, just like the other method, we're going to thread a bobber on. I remove the bottom, makes it much easier. Go through the top, pull the bobber through, go back to the bottom of the bobber, and make sure the weight stays on there. That's very critical because your bobber won't operate properly. You'll be frustrated. Thread that back up on there, slide it up, tie your fly on. Like I said, the knot really don't matter. You can use whatever knot you prefer. Cut your tag off. All right, and when you cast this thing, same thing, same as the other. So, You've got the bobber and then you have this little bee bead. Um, you kind of want to make sure that that gets back down to the bobber. And then you have your threaded tag in that's going to be wound up in your spinning reel up about 12 foot. So when you cast it out, you just cast it out like you would anything else. The fly is going to begin to sink as this bobber is on its side. The line is going to pull through until you see that knot coming there. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna hit this bead, it's gonna lock it in there, and the weight of the fly is gonna counterbalance this bobber and it's gonna stand up. Same thing, if the fly is pulled down, bobber goes down, if the, a fish grabs it and pulls it up, you will see this bobber kick over on its side. So, like I was saying, sorry guys, I had a phone call and I'm videoing with my phone. Um, like I was saying before, this will move sometimes while you're fishing. So just double check it every now and then, not every single cast, you know. Every 10, 15 minutes is, is, is fine just to make sure that you're still sitting at the kind of the length that, that you want it. And you, normally the way I do it, if, if I'm fishing like a seven foot rod, um, I'll come down to the end of my rod, the butt of my rod, and just kind of judge it from there. Um, you just want to make sure that you kind of, if you're getting bites, you stay in that area. You know, you don't want to get down too deep or, or get up way too shallow. So it's just, it's very simple. And like I said, it doesn't move that much. I found I preferred this method. Um, like you can see, I'm, I'm kind of putting pressure and weight on it and it's not really moving. So um, I prefer this method. The only issue I've seen out of doing it, and we'll cover this in the video again, um, is when you're fighting a fish, when you get a bite and you're reeling in this fish on the spinning reel or the baitcaster method, the fish has got all this. The bobber's going to stay at the top of the water column. When you start to reel in a fish, either on the spinning technique or this one, if that fish gets underneath the boat, if it's up under you where your rod's like this and the fish has got got your line 
either coming off of the 45 of your rod or back up under the boat, you need to play that fish. Do not try to horse it in because what happens is this bobber stop or this bobber stop is gonna come up to your guide. And since it's at that backward angle, it's gonna kind of hang on that end rod, that, that, that the rod guide on the end of your rod and it's not gonna really wanna come in. So normally what I do is I'll just play, play the fish when I get up to this point. And I'll kind of wait till I get that perfect angle on it. And like I said, I'll kind of show you all this in the video. It's not very hard and it's a, it's a heck of a lot easier than getting up to a swivel that's connected to the bobber and still having a 14 foot leader where you got to kind of get down and hand line a fish in. And that is, that's very frustrating when it's, it's a five, five and a half, six pound spot, you know, um, you really don't have any for, forgiveness when you grab hold of that line with your hands. Um, that that you're at the mercy of that fish at that point so normally what i'll do and like i said i'll show y'all this in the video is i'll let that fish fish swim around i'll kind of play it till it gets in line with my rod and then that bobber stop will come right through that first guide and once you get through that first guide you've got him like i said it's the same thing with the spinning technique is once you get up that first guide if it's like this backwards it will come through but you, you run the risk of nicking up your guide and stuff like that, or the risk of it hanging up and it's, it's kind of like you're deadlocked and you have no mercy with that fish. So um, same thing with this one, kind of let it swim around till it, it doesn't have to be perfectly in line, but to the point where it's kind of in line with your rod, reel it on through. Like I said, once you get to that first guide, you got him, you reel all the way up, and this is what you have at the end with the fish, you know, and you don't have, like I said, you're not hand lining or holding a 12 foot rod up over your head, 10 foot rod up over your head, trying to get enough line in where you can reach down the net or grab this fish, so. Be happy, oh, one's got it. I don't know yet. See how it went down yeah. and I gave the rod to it to get that bobber stop in there. There you go guys, float and fly. Big but not bad, it's fun. Again, I was on a bait caster using a bobber stop. you catch on this stupid dude, thing. Dude, dude, that is the biggest spot I've seen. That's probably, what, close to five? Dude, that's a big one. There you go, guys. Baitcaster, float and fly fish. It'll be five pound spot. So it works. Go put your head down and fish. 